Hi. BMO, the options matrix, and Bebop version 2 are close to being released. So let me do a slightly more in-depth review of the spreadsheets. If we go to um, Bebop, there has been quite a few presentations on it. What I have added lately is to choose the RV model. Uh, one, yeah. the dividend yield drift, because I have noticed that at least for the T plus zero, current option pricing model, a dividend yield drift seems to match um, the pricing model the, the market makers are using. So this is calculated, and if we go here, you can look at the dividend yield drift, the, uh, basically how the dividend yield is being priced in for expiration one and expiration two. We can see for that for a short dated expiration, puts below 2800 basically discard any dividend yield impact. Now, if we close this, the other pricing model I'm using is the new div or the new dividend less substitute or dividend free substitute. Basically, using the put call parity, I calculate the forwards and I calculate a dividend free substitute for the SPX. So basically with uh, this is live data if we use this dividend as the underlying the dividend free substitute or new is for the expression 1 2897 and for expression 2 2895. These are the values returned by IB and these are my calculated values very similar plus minus one point. Note that outside market hours, these figures can be wrong. So we can use the UDIV, and if we look at the tickers, at the moment I, I'm requesting data for all puts and calls for the two expirations, basically September and October. If I use the UDIV, basically the dividend-free substitute, we, I can see that I get a model very close to IB's market maker's model. And if we look at the IB graph, this is what it is, using the calculated one. I am not going to show you the different calculations, the dividend yield drift or IB's. Actually, IB's model is here, and the dividend drift will be probably very, very close. It is meant to match our IB's options pricing model. But the fact is that the UDIV model, because it it takes the dividend yield off the equation. It's actually a lot easier to work out a vol surface later on. So these are the latest uh, additions to the pricing model. No change in the price. So I'm still using here a RTT type example. And so let's go now to BMO. BMO captures everything from BBOP. Now on the dashboard, you can see that I display Bebop source, basically where the data is coming from, and also check whether Bebop is being opened. The reason for this is that when Bebop is open and when calculations are being done, the feeder can actually slow down calculations and analysis of your position. So I switch calculation to manual. So if you want to calculate, you just refresh data. I mean, it will update automatically from Bebop. Here I've got 2981 cents. If I go here, I've got this exactly the same here. So basically, because calculation is manual here, you will have to calculate every time just pressing the calc button. This data will be updated automatically. It is just the calculations, not the, ca the data capture from Bebop. Data capture from Bebop will be done automatically. If I go back to Bebop, data is still the same. So there can be a slight delay in refreshing, 93, but basically it is the same. It's just the time, the synchronization of events. This one is probably the most up to date, but how Excel then refreshes all other spreadsheets using the data is not something I can definitely control. So there can be a slight delay that should not impact the, the analysis. What I've changed here is I have actually reduced the number of temps to the bare minimum. You can just recalc based on the latest figures and you can check your position.
as you can see here, you can have too many t plus 0, t plus n lines. So what I suggested is that you go to parameters and you select, for example, I want this one. This I just want to, to have the t plus 0 to t plus 15 days. I recalc. And if I go now to position, I only have the t plus 0 to t plus 15 days, which is 15 of September. If you now want to go back to parameters, I reset to calculate everything. Another, another possibility is that, and this is an RTT type, if we go back to position, this is an RT type broken butterfly, 2700, shorts at 2775, and the long at 2825. Now, let's assume we have additional structures, but we want to just check how the, the core broken butterfly is faring. You can select based on name, here are lower longs, shorts, and upper longs. This cell is something you type yourself. Of course, here, yeah, because this is a strike with no position, no strike, it will be discarded. So I could type anything, it will not matter. But let's say now for this three, and just, just for the sake of, of the demonstration, I'm just going to assume we have two shorts and one lower long. I'm going to recalc on this one. It's going to be a very different figure because now we don't have the upper longs. And of course, this is now a very different picture. Two shorts and one long down there. So of course, this is a very different type of position. So we go back to parameters. And we, if we just reset, we go back to the recalc we go back to the former position. There we are. So you can choose exactly what you want to watch in terms of strikes. So combos you want to see with or without adjustments. And you can also select if you don't want to have the full 13 T plus Ns. The best is to select only the one you want. Let's say I want to know what my position will be like in a month from now. I just recalc. If I now look at the position for just one, this is how it looks. It's going to be the position on the 30th of September. It is not reset automatically, so you have to come back and reset to have the 13 T plus Ns and the full position. Something I've showed in previous presentations is that, of course, you can have the position in 3D. This is the PNL. And position in 3D, typical of an RTT, very flat, and profit will just pick up near the shorts as time goes by. Delta, Vega, Theta, Gamma. You can choose to look at all the calculation data coming. Every time you calc, you calc everything, it goes into a sheet here called Calcs. And you can have a look. This is the Option one, low longs, the, the, the strike range from 26.43 to 32.24, and the 13 expirations. Same for the shorts, same for the upper longs, and there's nothing else in this position, but we could go up to 20. As a matter of fact, the code is independent on the position size. So if you can have a very, very intricate positions with dozens of strikes, it will work just the same. So let's go back to position. Let's just have a look at parameters. Let's say I want just the shorts. If I go to position, you can see I just have the short selected. And this strike will be included in calculations and these two will be excluded. So it's always good to reset to make sure that you have the full position. Now, all strikes with a position, not plus 1, minus 2, plus 1, will be taken care of in the calculations. So as you can see, you have a matrix with up to 20 strikes in a position. And you can choose not only to select which time frame you want to look at, but also 
the different strikes you want to analyze. So this is a position and the parameters. Now let's have a look at the Greeks. This is the Greeks as of now. It seems that the spot is at between 2905. That's correct. The market has gone up a little. So if I go back to the Greeks, this is my T plus zero. At 2905, my PL is 0.54, so I'm basically losing $54. My delta is one. Gamma is flat. Vega is just minus 10, and theta is slightly negative. Now let's say on, I want just to see, like I did earlier, just want to see what my Greeks will be like a month from now. In 30 days, my PL will be slightly positive. Delta will be still flat. So basically, we just select the T plus N we want to look at. Quite handy, isn't it? The next step is will be, so let's go back to the dashboard and let's get rid of the calculations for now. So that's basically the only times you will have to look at is the position, the dashboard, basically where the data is being captured from Bebop, the position, your parameters, basically uh, the time, the, the T plus N you want to look at and uh, the strikes you want to select. And there you've got the Greeks. So I just added two tabs here, Russell and SPX. The Russell captures everything. I could have used Bebop, basically IB, to, to download uh, the latest data, but actually it's actually simple to just, just use the web query and capture the data from, the, from Yahoo. So here I'm going to refresh, and just in case Yahoo returns a string not a number so sometimes this chart is not correct so just to make sure I'm just going to redraw and I've got the same for SPX this is the latest data as of last night 2901 and I can refresh the web query and just in case Yahoo again returns oh as it does now returns a string. So if I, if I would calculate from here, I would get no chart. So to make sure, I just redraw and there it's back. So the next step will be to um, have some analysis of a statistical volatility versus uh, implied volatility. This is coming in the next version. But I believe this working version of BMO uh, can be released. So there will be further updates there will be uh, more fe features. I think this combination Bebop plus BMO can be used very efficiently. You already have your position. You can choose using parameters that what you want to look into the position. And you can actually display all the Greeks for any T plus N. Okay, so that's it for now. For any question, just uh, send me an email or personal message below here on YouTube, and I'll be happy to reply as soon as possible. Bye for now.